Hello YouTube, Moose Cow here with a components video for our game of Kings and Kaisers. Um, this is what I'll be playing with uh, against Madman next week when we start our game. Um, and uh, this is just what I have on my end of the, of the, uh, of the, of the game, <laughs> of the battlefield so to speak. I am fortunate in that I have actually uh, two copies of Axis Analyze 1914, or rather two, two sets of pieces of Axis Analyze 1914. So the bulk of my pieces um, are from Axis Analyze 1914. Uh, Madman wasn't able to secure a copy of 1914 until somewhat recently, but he only has one. Um, and he is working on uh, 3D printing his own pieces and so on and so forth. Um, but that's something that he's looking into. And uh, you'll see that uh, some of his 3D printed pieces on his channel has come up with some pretty cool ones. Um, but for myself, it will mostly be um, uh, 1914 pieces, but also um, a lot of uh, customized uh, painted HBG pieces, uh, various cavalry units and things I've pulled from other games um, as well. Um, the bulk of my pieces fit in my what I call my 1914 war chest, or my Kings and Kaisers war chest. So the bulk of my game pieces are in here. However, not everything fits in there, but the major majority of it I keep in this chest. Uh, this uh, uh, this Bush, uh, St. Louis, Missouri chest. Um, the rest of it, as you can see, I have. Uh, I keep my Chinese pieces in this little box. I keep my dice in this box, along with my convoy markers, and then other odds and ends here. Uh, chips, neutral pieces, uh, field technology markers, damage pieces, uh, um, flight stands, etc. And I'll get to that in a bit. But first... Let's dive into what we got right here. So, everybody, for the most part, everybody fits in here pretty well. So, starting with Austria Hungary, just kind of go over this a little bit real quick. We got, again, I got two sets of 1914 pieces. So, I got plenty of artillery, plenty of infantry. And then we have these are cavalry from Risk. And of course they're of course they're a little bright in comparison, but um, that's good enough for me. So um, those are my Austro-Hungarian cavalry, and then we also have some trucks. These are Shapeways trucks that I've got uh, years ago, and I think a few years ago, and painted painted these. And then we have, of course have transport subs, cruisers, dreadnoughts. We, uh, in 1914, they call them battleships and they cost 12 IPCs. We have changed them to dreadnoughts, which is more just, it's exactly the same, but stylistically, you know. And we uh, changed their price to 15 IPCs. So cruisers are still nine, dreadnoughts cost 15. Fighters, and those are the same 1914 pieces. And then here are some HBG bombers that I got and painted up and magnetized as well. So. All of my fighters are magnetized. I did, these were some of the first pieces I magnetized, so I did drill into these, but if I could do this all over again, I would honestly just glue the, glue the magnet slightly off center to the, to, to this, to the, the left or the right of the um, body of the aircraft, just over there off, off center a little bit, just because as you can see, some of my, some of my propellers from the magnetizing process got a little bent, but anyway, there's that. And then we have, this is the tank. I always think that the I always thought that the tanks, uh, the prototype tanks, for World War One were very fascinating. Even though most of them didn't uh, leave the drawing board, this was a Austro-Hungarian tank design idea, and it didn't get implemented. But as you can see, it's like a you know kind of a ski trench looking thing. But it got these, and these are HPG pieces. Got a bunch of those. Here are my uh, Austro-Hungarian uh, task force markers. That I keep here, and then of course their respective roundels. So that summarizes Austria Hungary. I'm just gonna put them over here. Moving on to Russia. We have same thing out of box infantry, artillery, uh, naval units, fighters. Got the massive HBG bombers. I can't remember what this is called exactly, but it's huge. It's the largest bomber, and it's ridiculous. And then I have two kinds of prototype tanks for Russia. We have this one, and then we have the wonderful, glorious Tsar tank 
that is just insane. I was waiting for them to come out with a 3D printed piece for a while so that I could have a couple of these on my board. They are just ridiculous, these weird gigantic bicycle things. And then we also have some rail markers because um, in our game, Russia builds the Trans-Siberian Railway and uh, it's a cost of one IPC and it can only build one rail at a time. And that allows to them and allied units to move across uh, the rail. Um, the rail, the Trans-Siberian Rail, uh, I looked it up and that was not actually fully completed until 1917, right before the revolution, I believe, happened. So that's kind of where that comes from. But yes, Russia can build the rail. And then we also have our task force markers. And then this is a capital marker because in our game, Petrograd is the capital and it starts the game as the capital, but the capital move can be moved to Moscow. So if um, the central powers are adjacent to Petrograd or contesting Petrograd, Russia on their turn can pay 12 IPCs to immediately move the capital to central Russia. And it's helpful, not required, it's helpful to have a capital marker. And this is from uh, the same Risk game that you see all those arrows from. It's from that, that version of Risk. Um, but it's helpful because since uh, both both are represented as buildings. It's just a nice visual reminder that this is the capital because then that means you have unlimited mobilization here, not here. So that is why we have this, Russia has this capital marker here. And then I have two variations of roundels to use just for player's choice. We have the one with the full detail or the one that's more out of box that's just black. And that we have that on our map just because of how much small detail that would be to get right. So this is just easier to, to do. We of course have our HPG coasters as well, although I did upgrade to the um, uh, build plates recently, but I have those as an option. Now here we get Germany. Same thing with the roundel or the coaster. We have infantry and you're gonna need a lot of German infantry for this game. Um, it's annoying how the original game did not come with enough. Um, for the original even, like, like you finish the setup but you have no extra infantry pieces to buy, right? So what I've found is I still need, you know, with the global version, we still need even more German infantry. So what I've found is that actually the classic Axis and Allies, Axis and Allies classic German infantry actually matches pretty well. Here, let me see if I can get that down on the table for you. Yeah. It actually matches fairly well. It's maybe like a little bit lighter. But it matches pretty good. So, yeah, if you have a copy of Classic, just grab your Germans from there and throw them in there to get even more German infantry. Then we have artillery. We have, again, more trucks. Again, from Shapeways. And then these are HPG cavalry. Gray. Works quite well. These are technically, I think, Anzac or whatever, but they're German now, so. Then we have the standard out-of-box naval units. We have uh, bombers here. And then for hero units, I have actually two variations. This is a Red Baron from Shapeways, and this is a Red Baron I got from HPG that I painted. So this is the better looking one, I guess, but either works. But you can only buy, Germany can only buy one of these. And then I did get more of these fighters from HBG just to give them a few more uh, aircraft to work with. And then over here, we have the glorious Zeppelins. These are magnetized. These are magnetized and um, I have a bunch, but you're actually only gonna need two for our game. This is the larger size Zeppelin that HBG sells. And then the rest of them I have are smaller Zeppelins. So, yeah, get, get some magnetized Zeppelins. It's pretty cool, right? Um, we have a rule for Zeppelins can act as air transports um, or bombers. Most of the time they'll be used as bombers to bomb capitals and victory cities. Um, and then, uh, um, oh yeah, here's a stand for the Red Baron. Again, from HPG. So if I feel like purchasing him, um, or sorry, if Rickfield, Madman, feels like purchasing him, he will, but 
Try to put that over there. So yeah, here are Zeppelins. Here are some rail guns. These are HPGs that I painted up. The Paris gun, rather. So we have it so Russia, not Russia, Germany and France are the only powers that can build rail guns. And it's an optional piece. It's not a, it's an expanded unit. You don't have to have those. You don't have to have these. You don't have to have bombers, but and you don't have to have trucks. But if you want to incorporate it in the game, you absolutely can. Uh, and then we also have our task force markers for Germany. We have three options. And then we have uh, airship bases. And these are where Zeppelins need to um, load up, reload their bombs. And also where they need to load, uh, if they want to act as air transports, they have to load them from an airship base. They can drop them off anywhere that they have uh, German units already, but they have to load them from an airship base. So that is their little stipulation. All right, and uh, let's see. And then you can also see on my boxes, I have the prices of the um, units listed as well. You know, fun little thing. So that's Germany. Moving on to France. I'm going in a turn order, of course. So we've got a coaster, infantry, artillery, standard, and we have trucks. We have HPG, oh, sorry, the Shapeways trucks. I actually prefer these. I think they're from Ebards or another store. I prefer these trucks to the HPG ones. I think these are Liberty trucks, technically a US unit. Um, these are cool, but uh, when I was painting them one time, I dropped it and it actually cracked. I, I Not this one, but a, a UK one, British Empire one. It actually cracked right there, so these are more fragile than than this. Although these are, you know, Shapeways. Everything from Shapeways is more expensive, unfortunately. But the price we pay for quality, right? <clears throat> and then HPG does have blue cavalry, but I like that for France. I personally like the risk molds more for them. I think it just fits with them a little better. So. Um, these are just French um, cavalry from Risk, standard ones. And then we have the standard, again, the standard naval units, transports, subs, cruisers, dreadnoughts. And then we have fighters, and then we have the HPG bombers, and the rail guns. We also have tanks. They have a few, a few variations of tanks. This is a Renault tank, and I actually bought this from a few of these from HPG when they had them in stock, and they were, I think they're from Shapeways. I don't know how well it's registering. They're from Shapeways, I think, because they were already pre-colored, and they seem to be made of that same material. So I didn't have to paint these ones, but I did have to paint, I did have to paint these. So I got those two, and also have some of, I can't remember what this one's called, but this is another one that HPG had some of, and I think they're Shapeways, because again, I didn't have to paint them. But I do have, this is what I have for French tanks. We have the French Task Force marker, and of course the French roundels. Moving on to Britain. Britain's gonna need a lot of infantry in Kings and Kaisers. Oh, focus, focus, focus. Okay, so I, again, I have two sets of 1914, but I have found that the Celery Green units from Revised, Accidentalized Revised, focus, um, they're not exact, but they're pretty close. So if I need extra units, I throw those guys on the map as well. If you can get, not all copies of Revised come with Celery Green, but a bunch of them do. Then we have your standard artillery, trucks. Again, these are my trucks I have. And then here's some cavalry. And this color is probably the hardest one I found to match, the celery green. So I've painted these uh, some cavalry up with the rest with some rustoleum paint. Otherwise, I usually go to uh, Tamiya, but there wasn't anything Tamiya that looked like this. And I've had a few crazy issues when I do go to clear coat them. So some of these look better than others. It really seems like a luck of the draw sometimes, in terms of how well they turn out. 
I'm not really sure if anything is, if the detail is really popping on this, but you kind of get the point. I gotta go through this to make sure the video is not too long. So then we got our standard out of box units, brings ourselves to some bombers. So UK bombers. And then we got a UK hero unit. And that is, if who fights the Red Baron? Snoopy fights the Red Baron, <laughs> right? So that's an option for UK. And then, ooh, I'm having focus issues like crazy. Okay. And then here, of course, we have the out of box tanks, and then also some HVG ones that I painted up. And then task force markers, roundels, etc. So that is my UK box. Japan, we get to Japan. Roundel uh, coaster again. Japan, this one was a lot, this one was quite a bit of work because not everything is available um, easily, I guess. So Japan, we uh, following Lion in the Trenches uh, style, went with a uh, gold and yellow route, and some of it was HBG pieces, and some of it's stuff I painted to, to match right. Um, this is an HBG uh, World War I Japanese infantry. These are very fragile. Um, this will break if I drop it. So even though not totally accurate, it's kind of easier to just go with these gold and yellow Japanese soldiers at HBG cells if you're concerned about breaking pieces. Um, I have painted a few out-of-box artillery, but I've also found that like the paint has a hard time sticking to this neck these 1914 pieces that can actually scratch off pretty easily. And then here's some gold and yellow HBG cavalry, or sorry, yeah, artillery. <clears throat> and then they have uh, gold and yellow trucks. So this is trucks that you don't have to paint. And then uh, again, risk cavalry. I always try to, not, I, don't, I don't like to have to, I'll paint something if I have to, but I don't like having to paint stuff. So there's, a, there's two kinds of yellows out there. There's more of a brighter, darker yellow and there's more of a dull yellow, that's what this is. Then we have transports. I painted some 1940 transports because I thought that was good enough and some, uh, I think these were actually originally American transports. And getting these, taping these and painting these was a real pain because the paint would come off kind of easily. And then here's some subs that are painted. These are from 1941, uh, accidentalized 1941 Japanese subs. And then here's some HBG cruisers and HBG battleships. And I know this is a Yamato battleship, but I thought, hey, it's close enough. Uh, then we have some, these are actually German fighters that HBG sells, but I painted them yellow. A biplane's a biplane in my book. And then use some uh, UK, UK bombers to paint for Jap Japan, since UK supported uh, Japan pretty much in this war, or vice versa rather, but they worked together in this war, so I thought that was appropriate. And then for tanks, I went with the... Um, since Japan didn't have tanks in World War One, but if they did, I figured they would go with the lighter... Um, Whippet tanks. So this is a British Whippet tank that I painted as Japanese, and it looks pretty cool. And then of course we have the one Japanese task, uh, task force marker and the Japanese roundels. Really like using the uh, standard Japanese flag for Japan in this game. 